Well, hello, saints and friends. This is another day the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. It is a beautiful day, everybody, um, this beautiful Tuesday morning. So I thank you all so kindly for allowing me into your private space this morning as we um, encounter God. Hey, Missy, encounter God. Hey, Yashika, in a time of encouragement, inspiration, and motivation through God's word. Hey, Tiffany, good morning to you, ma'am. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, I pray everyone had a peaceful night of rest last night, and we're looking forward to our time together this morning. So let's go ahead and go to the Father in prayer. Lord, indeed, we thank you and we honor you as our Savior, Lord, Master, and our friend. Um, so we love you, and because of our relationship with you, because you are our anchor, you are our source, we draw unto you, Father. So we thank you for um, the ability to come because you bid us to come to you. Honor this time, Father. Let it be for us whatever your desire is for it to be. And our response will be that of thank you and a response of yes to whatever your command is. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to continue our conversation, everybody, as we are um, in this series of relationship rehab. Relationship rehab. What's going on, Larry? Good morning, sir. Now remember, as you go into rehab, it is never about the people on the outside. It's only about the people that are on the inside. So I thank you for coming into rehab this morning. So we have to deal with ourselves, the truth, the reality about ourselves when it comes to our lives. And specifically this morning, hey, Tanya, when it comes to our relationships. So um, in this relationship rehab this week, we're dealing with the topic of um, Jesus and relationships. What kind of neighbor are you? What kind of neighbor are you? Now, let me remind you again that the challenge for the week is for us to no longer write things in sand, in stone rather, write them in sand. I remember I gave the story yesterday of um, the friend that wrote when his friend hurt him, wrote the hurt in sand, but wrote the saving, the blessings in stone. Please do your writing. Writing is therapeutic. The challenge is, for us to write what we're going to write. What's going on, Britton Haynes? Whatever we're going to write, we're going to write it on the right substance. So no longer write your hurts on stone, write your hurts on sand so the wind of the Holy Spirit can blow it away. Hey, Patrice, good morning. Sis, how you doing? So the wind of the Holy Spirit can blow it away. Don't write your hurts on stone because if we're not careful, we'll start um, writing it on stone after stone and we'll build a monument of hurts. Hey, Willie, good morning, sir. And we don't have time to build monuments of hurts. Instead, let's build monuments talking about the salvation and the grace of God. Once you build, continue to build that monument of hurt, everybody. Hey, Marcus, good morning, sir. It's going to be hard, very hard um, for people, for you to allow people to come in because everybody needs somebody in their lives, right? Hey, Valerie, good morning. We need somebody. If you build those monuments of hurt, hurts, it's going to be hard for someone to come in and provide the love that you need, let alone you being willing to open yourselves up to give love to somebody else. So I uh, understand my heart. Um, I'm not, Mac is not saying that um, your hurts are not real. Your hurts are real, but your challenge as a believer is to take your hurts to God, not to build a monument of them around you. All right. <laughs> Because if we do that, then we're not going to follow through with the scriptures, uh, which says to us to 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 um, be there for love one another. You know, uh, we we can't do that if we have monuments of hurts around us, right? All right, so let's do the work. You're in the rehab, do the work. Can't point the finger at anybody else. It's on you. All right. So we um, this week we're in a, in a beautiful um, passage of um, Luke chapter ten. Luke chapter 10, um, from 35 through 37. So yesterday I asked the question as we looked at the verses of 25 through 28, um, this keeper of the law asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And again, um, I, I challenge you to watch the video from yesterday because we laid a good frown, um, grain, frown work, foundation framework for this. Um, Jesus he was asked by this keeper of the law and Jesus kept him on his territory uh, by asking him what does what is written about it. And the keeper of the law, being a expert of the Torah, 
uh, went to what we know as the Shema, which means, oh, here, Deuteronomy 6 and 5. Um, and he says, love Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that is the part of love your neighbor as yourself is not in Deuteronomy 6 and 5. We read the scripture yesterday of Leviticus 19 and 18, where it says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself, comma, um, period rather, I am the Lord. All right. So that is the partnership, the dual relationship of how we're supposed to be loving on people. Hey, Troy. Hey, Ambry. Good morning to you. Yo, that's my aunt in San Diego. She's up early to listen to her nephew. Thank you, Ambry. Um, so th this, this says to us that the keeper of the law, this expert of the law, he knew what he was supposed to do. All right. So I asked the question yesterday. Uh, who are you? Are we, we would never just come out and say, well, we, we're the keeper of the law. Uh, we, we, we know what's best. We wouldn't say that, but we, for you being the age you are now in your salvific walk, the question is never, what am I supposed to do? Because God's word is very clear, especially for those of us who have asked Christ to be our savior, we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. So the Spirit yields to us the interpretation or, or the understanding that we need. So it's not the question, what am I supposed to do? Here's the question, am I going to do it? This man already knew what he was supposed to do. He knew the truth, but he was not willing to walk it out. That's a challenge, everybody, to know God's revealed will and willfully do otherwise is called, it's the definition of sin. So here this expert is, knowing what God says because he knew the word, but had a problem with applying the word in his life. Man, don't we know a lot of people like that? Well, forget about them. Haven't we seen that within ourselves? Well, here we are, we know what we're supposed to be doing, but yet it's the hardest thing for us to do. For those of us that are married, all men loving our wives as Christ loved the church. It, there's not a there's not a sub topic to that. Love our wives if she's acting lovable. No, 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 no. Um, the the scripture says wives um, uh, respecting your husbands, um, and that that respect doesn't have a caption to it. Respect him as long as he's making decisions that you appreciate. No, 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 no. Um, so we know what we're supposed to do. We know it, but we have a hard time doing it because we're looking at other people and what they are doing and what they're not doing, and we are basing what we do off of what somebody else does. And listen, I'm, that's not the bad part. The bad part is we're basing what we do off the, what the wrong people do. We have to base what we do off what Christ has done. So basing it off what somebody has done is not bad, the problem is, it's the wrong people we're using as the guide. We must use as our guide and our source, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And if Christ is able to even on the cross say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, who in the world do we think we are to build monuments of hurts and grudges against people? All right, who are you? So don't be too quick to point a finger at this uh, expert of the law because many of us act like experts too. Every time somebody brings up something, oh, I, I do this, 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 and this, and this. No, 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 no. And 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 just let me know how the response. No, 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 no. We have information for everybody else. But when it comes to our obedience, we kind of go in dark silent. Hmm. Who are you? <laughs> and you got to be willing to answer that question, everybody. Uh, so look at verse 29 through 32. Let's keep reading the word. The word law says this, but he wanted to justify himself. Hmm, does that sound familiar? So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus says, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, 
when he came to the place and saw him passed by on the other side. Hmm. So I have another question for you. Not only um, the question of who are you, here's another question. Um, do you see and flee? You know, simple, cute. Do you see and flee? So in order for Jesus to get this keeper of the law to understand, he gives him this story. And we know this to be um, the story about the Good Samaritan, right? He gives him this story because the man wanted to justify himself. Now I'm told, I'm gonna remind this again, we're not gonna jump down this expert of the law's throat because this whole justifying themselves is, is a piece of what we do. Because we know what we have done is not all the way the truth. So we kind of justify, well, you don't know what she did to me. You know what I mean? We try to we kind of try to balance our wrongness out. Although we know we cannot sin successfully, we're trying to balance it out so we don't look as bad as we should because we know that we should be for a whole lot further along down the road than where we are, right? So he tried to justify himself, like, who is my neighbor? <laughs> now, he's the one saying, love your neighbor as yourself. And then he gonna turn around and ask the question, well, 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 who, who, who is my neighbor? Mm -hmm. So Jesus, to get his attention, gives him this very realistic story. Now, in that day, in Jesus' day, it was an uh, a harsh, a hard trip, a harsh trip to go from Jerusalem to Jericho because the road was whiny and there were a lot of caves and caverns um, in the mountains. And so literally there would be people more, the uh, they were the Arabs would be in those caverns and caves and uh, around the corner on those windy roads and they would attack innocent people. So Jesus gives this man a realistic story because this this these this literally was the actions of the day, and so he gives him the story. He uh, the, the the story starts off by saying a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. So let's 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 paint this picture. For the Jewish culture, Jerusalem was the place. That's where the 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 big festivals the festivals happened. Um, that's where the uh, the big um, sacrifices the worship was was um, high there for the Jewish culture. So it's the picture of um, they were going down from Jerusalem. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, Valerie. They're from down from Jerusalem to Jericho. So here we're going to see these three men all coming from the same place. They're all on the same road. And two men that should have addressed the situation differently coming from the place of worship should have had a different response, all right? So let me stop and, and suggest this, that we can no longer go to our place of worship Sunday after Sunday, midweek after midweek, and we still leave the same. The reality is we don't really need to hear another sermon for the saints. You don't have to hear another sermon. We have heard God's word. We have given God our, our hearts, right? So we don't have to hear another sermon to be saved, right? All the sermons we hear today are encouragement for us to do what saved people do, what the Bible says we're supposed to do. And the reality is some of us are not even doing what we've already heard. What's going on, Brandon Marshall? Good to see you, sir. We're not even doing what we know to do. So you don't have to hear another sermon. We've got to become doers of the word of God. My father would say, some of us have a whole lot of hallelujah, but no do you -lu Meaning we talk a real good game, but we don't follow through with God's word. This is the picture of this keeper of the law. He knew the word, but he had a hard time walking it out. Isn't that interesting? So do you see and flee? So the story goes on to say, you read it. Uh, they were coming down from Jericho and 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 um, a man was coming down and he was attacked by robbers. He was he was stripped and he was beaten. So this man was in a hard situation. This was horrible. And the text says, um, living, um, and he was half dead, leaving him half dead. Horrible situation. So can you see um, Jesus getting the attention of this man? He, and he turned around, I bet he want to know, what, what is he going to say? What's, what are you going to say next? And a priest came by. Wow. Coming down the same road. I'm not making this up. It's right there. And when he saw the man, 
he passed by on the other side. Wow. So here you have, in the picking order of the Jewish system, you have the high priest, you had the priest, and then you had Levites. The high priests were the ones that actually did the sacrificing, right? We know this. Um, the priest prepared the sacrifice, right? And the Levites, um, they, they, they did the work inside of the, the facilities. They, they kept all the utensils clean. They uh, they um, kept the the, um, the the tents of the building, the facilities, all that kind of stuff, clean and neat, so that the the priest could come in and prepare the sacrifice, and the high priest could come in and offer the sacrifice. So everybody had a role to play. So here you have this priest. The priests were the go between um, between God and man, heaven and earth, and this priest comes across a man hurt, injured, dying by the roadside, and the priest sees him, goes to the opposite side of the street and walks by. Now that's interesting, isn't it? And we can't point the finger so hard at this priest because many of us leave our Sunday services with lunch on our minds. And our stomachs are moving so uh, we have a conquered king's stomach that we make a beeline to a restaurant. We got to get somewhere because it's time to eat. I got a schedule. I got to take a nap. I got to do this. I got to go, go to volleyball. I got to do, you know, and we get sidetracked by all these worldly sideshows. And we forget the main thing about loving God's people, loving our our neighbors the, the way we love ourselves. We get so busy. Now, listen, listen, as I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me, right? Get so busy. Got so many things to get, get an agenda. You know, I got to get this stuff done. It's Sunday. Got to get ready for Monday. Get these, go to the store, get food for lunches, you know, all this kind of stuff. And we get so busy, we miss a God opportunity. Hmm. Huh. Here this priest is. Goes to the other side. Now, here's the, here's the, here's the sad part is that he did all of this intentionally. <laughs> he had to have seen the man as he was walking up and seen something that he did not want to be a part of. He goes to the other side. He sees him and he also flees from him. Here this man is in desperate need of help. And this priest passes him by. Listen, everybody, we, can, we, we, we have to watch ourselves, check ourselves, because we can become so, so, so busy that here God has planted some people right in front of us that need us to put our hands on them, to touch them, to help them. And we're so focused on our schedule. We're so focused on keeping ourselves clean that we are passing by God's blessings to fulfill something that we, that we have... Um, been uh, been commissioned or called to do. Listen, greater than anybody's calling on their lives, you have been um, challenged and commissioned to be the arms and feet of God. How can we walk in half obedience? It's impossible. Well, I know I, this is my assignment. So this is my, because I got to do this. Is my Listen, your assignment is to be the arms and feet of Christ. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the priest did not want to run the risk of becoming ceremonially unclean. So he would rather be right for the people to see than be right with God. He didn't want to become ceremonially unclean, right? He would rather be able to fulfill his work and his ranking in the temple in front of people than being right with God in his heart. Now, don't, listen, don't you dare come down on this man too hard. Because um, such is uh, such uh, such is us. <laughs> so are we, right? That was a joke. So are we, right? We would rather look good in front of people. We would rather look good on on uh, in pictures and and on on social media. We rather look good than actually walk out the gospel. Y'all, we got There are some work in this rehab that we've got to do. We've got to turn our minds and our hearts around. And so that we can see the world the way God wants us to see it. Season for you is so busy. Then you know, so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
the field is the, the field is 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 open and and where people need us to put our hands on them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Got to walk it out. Yes, ma'am, Valerie. We are we we are his arms and feet. The opportunities are there, everybody. People are looking for someone to just to just touch them or just give them a hug, to tell them about Jesus Christ, to show them what a good neighbor and how a good friend loves on each other. But we are so busy. The church is so busy because we're into this whole political drama. We're all into that. We're all into trying to build the latest, greatest, the biggest amusement park. And, you know, it has its place. It has its place. But none of this supersedes us being the arms and feet of God. And we have worked ourselves in such a tizzy now that some people don't want our help because of the rhetoric we have put out there. There are some that were leave me alone if it's going to come from you because you, you, what I hear you spewing is some jacked up stuff. So listen, we've got to shut our mouths and be the arms and feet of Christ. Is that making sense for us? Um, not only did, 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 did this priest go to the other side, but tomorrow we're going to talk about this Levite going to the other side. Here the Levite is a server, a worker, one who whom waits, and he also passes up the opportunity to help somebody. Hmm. The challenge today, everybody. Yes, sir. So true. The challenge today is for us to be so open and vulnerable to the movement of the Lord that we we carpe diem, we seize the day. We don't miss the moment to represent God here on earth, being his arms and being his feet. That's our challenge. We've got to do it, right? So don't get caught up in what everybody else is doing. Get caught up in us following the pattern of Jesus Christ. And that old country boy said we got to get it done, all right? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the encouragement today. And the encouragement is for us to own who we are and for us not to walk over or walk past the opportunity of serving your children, serving humanity. And the spirit tells us what to do, how much to do. So it's not, it's not the fact of, uh, of, of not knowing what to do because the spirit leads us. But we have to make the decision to allow the spirit to lead us and to not pass people by. So Lord, we thank you for this encouragement for today this motivation for today to be the your arms and your feet to her humanity. So Father, we thank you. Thank you for trusting us. Uh, you look beyond our mistakes. You look beyond the moments we move slow and, and missed opportunities and you give us another one. So we thank you for what this day means as another opportunity to shine your light, to be your arms and your feet. Father, will you bless us and keep us? Will you allow your face to shine upon us and be gracious to us? Lift your countenance upon us and give us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, you all, thank you one more time for being on today. I certainly appreciate it. Um, it is encouragement to me when you actually come on. So thank you so much. Um, have a fantastic day. And listen, don't forget, if you want to see my favorite person, you know what to do. Just turn around and look in the mirror. All right, everybody, have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.